This year, my Maytag gas range finally gave out after 14 years of service, which meant that I was in the market for a new gas stove. After a bit of research, the model that I settled on was the GE 30 inch 5 burner 5 cubic foot freestanding gas range in stainless steel. The unit was a top seller and came very highly rated with many reviews. The feature that I was most interested in was the built in griddle in the middle of the stove. Based on the feature list and the reviews, I decided to move forward and order this stove. The stove was delivered to my house and I installed it myself. After an early test and first use, I made sure to note how easy it was to clean up. The walls around the stove top surface makes it easy to scoop up crumbs and then clean them up off the stove top. One thing that I did notice is that the big heavy duty grate over top the stove top was much heavier and took more effort to remove than my old stoves. Part of this is because the GE stove grate is a more heavy duty grate, but part of it is because you need to take off the grate for both burners when removing the grate. My old stove had a grate for each burner, which made it easy to pick off just one when doing a quick cleaning. One of the items that GE really emphasizes is that cleaning these grates is easy because they can go right in the dishwasher. But I found because the grates for two burners were connected, that the grate was so long that I needed to place it in my dishwasher just slightly diagonally to get it to fit. One thing that struck me is after just one practice use, there was some soot on my burner lid. After five minutes of scrubbing, I was able to get it out, but I'll touch on this a bit more later. For my first cook test on the griddle, I attempted to make some grilled cheese with beef bacon. And to start out, I first started cooking the beef bacon. Beef bacon is a food that has lots of fat that drains when you cook it. And the griddle is designed to guide the fat down to the grease reservoirs at the top and bottom of the griddle. But foods like this beef bacon or any other high fat meats can easily produce more grease than the griddle was designed for. And all of the grease that you see here all came from those three pieces of wide cut beef bacon. When it comes time to clean up the grease, we're going to need to grab some heavy duty oven mitts in order to pick up the griddle while it's hot and pour the grease away. Either that, or wait till the griddle cools and the grease solidifies into a sludge. To truly get the griddle clean after this amount of grease, we're going to need to put it into the sink and scrub it out. Or you could try to fit it in your dishwasher if you have a large enough dishwasher. While I was able to get the griddle clean, for cooking something like bacon, it was more effort than I felt was worth it. So I guess I won't be able to get rid of my old warped cast iron burner top griddle just yet. But even with that strike against it, I found the griddle top to be a very useful feature. As long as what you're cooking is not a high grease producer, you can easily make things like grilled cheese, French toast, and pancakes on your griddle and the built-in griddle makes it so easy. On items like these, you can clean up with just a damp sponge on your cooktop and wipe it clean. One of the things about this cooktop that really worried me was someone accidentally burning themselves because the griddle stays hot after you turn it off and stays hot for a while. It'd be really easy to touch it or place an item down on it while it's hot because it looks the same whether it's hot or not, but I found the perfect solution. Using a cooling rack is ideal to prevent unwanted burns. These racks are designed to take heat, and the slots in the cooling rack allow the cooktop to get air and cool without trapping heat. Most cooling racks are too wide to fit on the griddle, but I found one that fits the griddle nearly perfectly and only sticks out on the sides just a bit. I will add a link in the description if you have a similar stove or are planning on getting one. The oven feature is simple and straightforward to use. Just hit the bake button, set your temperature, and then hit start. One thing I had to get used to was seeing the screen display the word pre on the screen as the oven was preheating. My old oven actively displayed the temperature as it was preheating, so you knew how close it was to being heated. With this oven, you just need to wait until it beeps to know that it's ready. The good thing though is that it heats up very quickly. One of the things that initially concerned me was how hot the heat vent got. My old oven would also vent heat, 
but it seemed to distribute it across the entire length of the stove, while the new GE concentrates its venting straight towards the middle. As you can see, this means that the center can get up to 200 degrees, while the side maintains a moderate 120 degrees. But it turns out that this is normal and by design. GE designed the oven to vent towards the griddle plate and away from the burners, which makes sense. You do need to be careful, though, not to place anything in the middle that can't take some heat. And after using it, I don't have any complaints on the oven feature. One of the features associated with the oven that I really do like is the cook time feature, which unlike a standard timer, not only beeps to let you know when the time has expired, but also turns off the heat in the oven. Just set the oven temperature, hit cook time, and select your cook time. Then hit start when it prompts you to hit on. But this isn't a set it and ignore it type of feature, as the oven will constantly beep at you until you cancel the beeping. This oven does not have a storage drawer built in to store pots and pans. What it does have though is a dedicated broiler drawer. The broiler drawer allows you to place foods right next to the main burner. But keep in mind, the main burner is what gets used for the oven and the broiler. So if you use the oven, the broiler compartment will get hot. And if you use the broiler, the oven will heat up. The broiler is also a very easy feature to use. My old stove had a broiler feature as well, but it was so complicated to use that I never used it. I can see myself using this feature quite a bit. Now, the stove top has four different sizes of burners. Five of you count the griddle burner. The stove top feature is straightforward. Just turn the knob to ignite, then adjust the knob for flame size. However, I noticed that just after a couple uses, the burner caps began to get marked up from the flames. It only took a couple of uses for the burner caps to get marked up, and it seemed like no amount of standard cleaning could get it clean. In addition to the burner caps getting stained, I also had the burners themselves getting stained. And this is all within the first week. The ones in the burners themselves looked the worst to me. These were not caused by spills. These marks were caused by heat. No amount of standard cleaning could get these marks off. I tried scrubbing with baking soda, letting them soak overnight in vinegar, and running them through the dishwasher. But nothing I tried seemed to work to clean them off. I started looking up some reviews to see if anyone else had this issue what I found is that there was one review that echoed the type of issues that I'm seeing. The reviewer also attached some images that showed a familiar pattern. After I saw this review, I started to look up information on GE's website and came across this passage. So I followed the link as suggested and scheduled an appointment. A couple days before my appointment, I got a call from a GE rep who asked me if the issue that I'm having is discoloration on the burners, and I said yes. The rep then let me know that they were going to send me all new burners to replace the ones that I had. The rep also let me know that the same thing could happen again to the new burners, and that she has the same stove, and what she does is uses the stained burners, but then switches them out if she's having company over. Over time, the burner stains actually improve without needing me to spend effort cleaning them. They aren't quite like new, but the burner caps are looking pretty good, and the burners themselves no longer have a yellow tint, but a smaller black tint, which actually looks a whole lot better to my eyes. And, after a week or two, I did actually get new burners from GE sent to me, free of charge. But now that the stains have dimmed, I'm not nearly as concerned over them as I once was. Overall, I think this is a solid stove for a good value. I think that I would recommend this stove to someone that didn't care about not having storage, but would warn them about the possibility of the burner stains, even though most of the reviewers did not have this problem.